welcome to Out of the Box Radio with me, your host, Christine Glasdale. Out of the Box Radio is a weekly podcast of audible ear candy dedicated to bringing a fresh perspective on this thing that we call life. And each and every week, we're going to be diving into the topics that matter most with lively conversations on issues such as health, wellness, and transformational healing, all with the goal of creating a better world and becoming a happier human being. I will be your tour guide for this epic adventure, and each and every week we're going to be embarking on a journey with the ultimate goal being transformation to our highest potential. And now, let's get out of the box. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Out of the Box with Christine. I am your host, of course, Christine Blasdale. So wonderful to have you join us today. I've got such an amazing show for you, so I'm really happy that you tuned in. I want you to share this program with as many people as you can, because once you hear my guest, I think you're going to understand exactly why she is being spotlighted here on Out of the Box with Christine. My guest today is Suzanne Evans, who is the president and CEO of Driven Inc. She's a mom. She's a wife, a sister, entrepreneur, and risk taker from North Carolina. Driven Inc. founder Suzanne Evans has written several books, including the New York Times bestseller, The Way You Do Anything is the Way You Do Everything. And one of my, I love the title of this book too, Suzanne, and The Hell Yeah Diaries. Both books combine a traditional memoir of, with a dose of business expertise that chronicles Suzanne's meteoric rise from a secretary on Broadway making 40 grand a year to running a multi-million dollar business in less than five years. I am so very happy and super stoked to have on the program Miss Suzanne, Mrs. Suzanne Evans. Is it Miss, Miss Suzanne? Mrs. Well, we're in the South, so it is Mrs. <laughs> it's Mrs. <laughs> thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for, for coming on board. You are, you are one busy lady, Suzanne. I am a little busy. I, you know, it never feels that way, but it's so funny. This is my second... Um, chat with someone today. The first woman also said, she goes, you are one busy lady. So you said it, she said it. I'm starting to believe I'm busy. It, well, uh, that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. <laughs> my, as my daddy would say, it's always better than the alternative. Oh, yes. No. And you're, well, and you're, you're helping, you really are. You're really helping so many people realize their dreams. You know, I, I had mentioned in that intro that you uh, started off uh, as a secretary on Broadway making 40 grand, and now you're running a multi million dollar business. And a great part of that is because of the work that you do, inspiring others to take a hold of their life, take control of their life, and to follow their dreams. And that's why I wanted to have you on. So if you don't mind just letting our listeners know, give them, because I love stories too, man. I, I just think that the stories of our lives are so powerful. And I would love to have our listeners know a little bit about how you got to this point. How did you get from going, being from a secretary, secretary, I don't know why I'm saying that, <laughs> secretary. How, how did you get from being a secretary, uh, you know, working for somebody else, the nine to five grind to where you are right now running a multi-million dollar business? Taking breaks in the bathroom stall. <laughs> um, and <laughs> what I mean by that is I think everybody can relate to this a little bit. I was I was in a very ad- administrative role and I was very fortunate in the sense that I did have an, you know, it was in the Broadway theater industry. So it was interesting. You know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't totally know, it wasn't, boring, right? Yeah, it wasn't totally boring, but it was still working for the man. Right. And it was still day in and day out grind. And it was still not really inspiring me. And, and I was having those, you know, it, it all sounds like such a cliche life coaching book, right. at some hippie bookstore, but, <laughs> but I was having those moments of like, this is not me. Right. And mm-hmm. I'm meant for more. And, and I, you know, would be like, am I just, you know, am I reading my horoscope too often or is this really, you know, my <laughs> inner voice? And, and it did, you know, it all, it all ended up being that, you know, when you're spending, when you're going to the bathroom, and you don't need to pee, 
but you're going just because you need to sit for five minutes because mm. you're so bored in the job. Mm. Um, right. Yeah. It, it, it's, you need to do something else and it's time to do something else. So I started to think about what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be when I grew up. And I, I mean, I went down such a wild path of so many different things of from being a hospice nurse to being a therapist to uh, opening a barbecue restaurant in New York City to landing on life coaching. And the reason I landed on life coaching was and I think a lot and, and obviously you do coaching as well. So mm -hmm. you get this. I was the person everybody called to solve their problems. Right. And I <laughs> right. Do you get that? Of course. Right? of course. And so I thought. I should charge these people. Yes. Right. I'm, I'm sick of solving. Like, should I leave my job? Should I stay in my job? Oh my gosh. Should I leave this guy? Should I stay with this guy? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, my, my mom and I aren't getting, you know, whatever it was. And so I came across life coaching and I started a life coaching business with the singular purpose to make $6,000 a month because I was making about 55 or 60 in the day job. And I thought I'll probably need, you know, a couple of thousand extra to run a business. And if I can make $6,000 a month, I am going to have the grandest life on the planet. And it really started that way. It started as a means to leave my day job. And I did not have savings. I did not have a sugar mama or a sugar daddy, although I am in the market for one. So I know that this reaches a large audience. <laughs> so if you want to do that for me, just email my team. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get offers. You know that. <laughs> Um, I'm expensive, people. I'm expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I didn't have that. I, I didn't have a family situation. I have wonderfully supportive parents. But quite frankly, they, they were having their own financial challenges. My dad was a farmer. So there was nowhere, right? I mean, there was, there was nowhere to borrow from. There was nothing to do except if you want to do this, Suzanne, right, you know, put on a pair of overalls and pick up a shovel. And so I did. And I grew the business to six figures in the first year while staying in the day job. Whoa. And then, uh, yeah, I was still in the day job working 60 hours a week. And then I made about 250 the second year still in the day job. And I think the important part of this to know is that I was a horrible life coach. <laughs> <laughs> I was really bad. And, and I was making 250000 a year. So, and I know you get this as well. We have these people that come up to us and say, you know, I, I, I really want to start a business, but I want to work on my skill set. I want to be amazing. I'm like, no, you can really be average and do quite well in this country. Right. So, <laughs> so you know, and, I, and it just wasn't what I was meant to be doing. I, I still, to this day, every day, I do a lot of life coaching because I now coach and consult business owners, right, on growing their business and launching their business. And you don't coach someone's business without coaching their life. Cool. But I really was like, you know, I should have made my brand like the the least impatient on the planet.com right and then said if you want to talk to the least patient person on the planet call this number and she'll charge you to talk to her Suzanne you could um, have been the dominatrix of life coaching right it's so true it's so true um so I was still in the day job 250 a year mm -hmm. making now like 62 I've gotten a little raise in the day job and my uh partner she's my wife now but my partner at the time Melanie said you know, I never thought you would do this. I don't mean that I don't believe in you, but I mean, I may have a touch of mania. You know, I, I get ideas and, uh, and I don't know if anybody can relate to that, but I'll be like, I'm going to build a building out back. And, you know, it lasts for an hour and a half. And then I'm like, no, I'll probably just watch a movie. Yeah. Um, and so she was like, not that I don't believe in you, but, you know, you've turned this into something really incredible and you're still going to work every day. And it's making me think you're stupid. Um, <laughs> so, so I left the job and in leaving the job, I also um, switched directions to be a business consulting and marketing coaching company. And then that's, you know, here we are today, a, you know, multi-million dollar business, New York Times bestseller, been on the Inc. 500, 5,000 for five straight years. And tell the people, um, tell, tell the people's, tell the people what being on the Inc. 500, 5,000 is in case they don't know. So, yeah. So Inc. Magazine every year comes out with the five 
500 fastest growing companies in America. And our first year we landed on the 500. And then it, it also has a division that's the 5,000 fastest growing companies in America. So we were on that list for five straight years. I think I was number seven fastest growing female owned company in South Carolina at the time. I'm, I'm in North Carolina now. Um, I think I was the uh, number 27 fastest growing company in all of South Carolina. And then we were like number two, always forget if it was 222 or 227, something like that. Um, fastest growing companies um, in America overall. So it was a great honor that you work your hiney off to get, but um, but I love what I do. I love I love seeing people have an idea and turning it into something. I love seeing people who have this dream of being a business owner and not being willing to put the effort in. And I love being the person who discourages them from doing it. Um, <laughs> and then I love being the person who inspires the people who actually will do the work to do it. Um, so, yeah, here we are 11 years later. I'm now in North Carolina um, for um, for. Uh, children reasons. I, I moved to an area with an awesome school system and an awesome thriving entrepreneurial community. So we're happily, our office is in Carver, North Carolina, which is in the Chapel Hill, North Carolina area. And um, yeah, and, and here I am not having any idea what the original question was, but I can talk forever. So back to well, you. Uh, this, and this is part of <laughs> the beauty of Suzanne Evans is, you know, and I, I had seen you um, at the Rockstar Marketing Boot Camp that the fantastic Craig does well puts on. And one thing that I um, that I really noticed is that you have this ability and I know you teach others. This is one of the uh, the trainings that you uh, that you offer uh, clients as well and and um, and large groups of folks when you do your events. But you offer um, this wonderful training of how to be a speaker, how to be a public speaker. Yes. If it's motivational, if it's business, um, to, if it's keynote speaking and why people need to be speaking, why, <laughs> how lucrative yeah. it can be. But man, you just, I got to say, you, 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 you grab people's attention and the authenticity, the realness and the authenticity of you is so um, appealing and so uh, um, engaging that it is, and, and I, I would say that that is something that really stands out along with, and because we've all seen a lot of, you know, speakers, we've heard the pitch, we've, you know, um, if, if it's motivational speakers or if it's someone who's uh, talking about um, business leadership and things like that, but you have this beautiful authenticity that you're just real. You're really real, and you're not perfect, and you and you even teach people, you know, it. Trust me, it's actually better if you're not perfect. And I yeah, love that. You know, it was funny. Yesterday, I was sitting with a client. I was running a client event, and a, a client of mine um, is an amazing um, uh, weight loss expert. It's what she does. And so she gifted my team to do this program of hers, and some of my clients are doing it. And said, "Oh yeah, I'll jump in. I'm, I'm a team player and fat, so I'm happy to <laughs> play." And this one of my sweet, sweet clients looked at me and she said, "Oh, Suzanne." She said, if you want this diet to work, you have to stop saying, like, you have to stop referring yourself as the fat girl. And you have to stop saying, like, you know, I'm fat and all these things because the mindset piece of this. And I said, <laughs> I said, listen, I'm always going to be the fat girl. I can't afford to lose weight. It's a part of my brand. I was like, I'm just playing along here. And th the reason I share that story is, you know, I've been overweight since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I think that all of us have challenges, deficits, um, uh, issues, um, and, and things that impede our success in some level. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and I would say 85% of those are internal, right? Yeah. Um, we don't see them. It's the person who has maybe low self-esteem or someone who has dyslexia or someone who, whatever it is. Mine was always the first thing you noticed when I walked into a room. It was my weight. And it's been that since I was seven or eight years old. And I say, it, listen, I don't want to get into a health conversation here. I, I totally believe I should be healthy. I believe people should be healthy in general. But for me, being overweight was the greatest gift that I ever had. Because mm -hmm. I walked into every room with one of my challenges, right, um, in front of everybody. You could see it. It was there. And still to this day, when I take a stage, it's like, you don't go, oh, my God, look at that brilliant. If you've never met me, you go, oh, my God, she's going to be brilliant. You go, oh, she's fat. 
right? You just do. And so it puts me in a place where I can only be me. This is what I got. This is who I am. And if everybody listening to this would take that on, whether it was the, you know, the, the, can I say, can I cuss? Of course, go for it. Okay. (laughs) The (laughs) shitty childhood, right? The, the drunk dad, the, the, uh, the failing out of school, the being fired from your job, the low self-esteem, the wondering if you'll ever be good enough. If, if all of us would just take that and bring it to the table and say, this is what I bring to the table instead of this is what I'm trying to hide under the table. Bingo. Boom, boom. Yeah. Live in a different world. Live in a different world. Oh, yeah. No, you 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 nailed it. And and what it is, it's, it's relatability. Because yeah. when you come off, you know, you've seen, you know, you've seen people who, um, you know, the outside package looks polished and there is no flaws and in their delivery if they're doing a you know a speaking engagement there is you know this just this perfection or this appearance of it's just it's called the it's like the social media um you know issue with instagram and facebook you know those are like avatars <laughs> okay it's yeah. you know they show moms you know in like bikinis with the baby they're they're perfect and everything they don't show the fact that you know two o'clock in the morning they get up they, they're getting up and the baby's throwing up all over the place and they got right you know uh they don't have any makeup on whatever and, and but the thing is is that when you take the stage you are completely relatable to so many people that are in the audience and they are um also motivated to the fact that look well look if she was able to do this if she was able to go from you know um working as an admin you know a secretary to running a multi-million dollar business if she was able to do what she's she's done um and she is the way she's as real as she is and she brings it out on the table and she is exposing that that reality that's what brings people closer to you that's what that's what brings people to realize how honest you are and your integrity and that i find you that is gold that is actual and, gold and- you know, I love what you're saying. I, I've always taught my speaker clients in particular, um, people trust imperfection. Yes. Right? And that's what we're all trying to do. Anybody that's listening to this who's an aspiring business owner or is a bu- business owner, that's what we're all trying to do is we need people to trust us. We need people to trust that we can solve their problem. We need people to trust that they're going to give us money and we're going to take care of them and we're going to do what we said. And people trust imperfection. So I'm always amazed at the fact, you know, there's this, there's a very famous coach out there who's really smart, bright, bright person, incredibly um, intelligent, intelligent. That was great. Yeah, that was a new word. (laughs) Intelligent. Um, And she has had so much plastic surgery. It pains me to watch her do a video. Oh, and and I always, pa- and listen, I'm not against, pa- I mean, do what you want to. I don't care what you do, right? Um, but I always have this moment where I go, oh, my God, she's so beautiful. And she's, so, you know, if I could just be that thin for a week. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, so there's an old, you know, there's that old African uh, proverb and story that says, everyone stand in the circle and put your deepest troubles into a paper bag. Right. Mm -hmm. And we all want to get rid of our troubles. We all want to get rid of our pain. So everybody go put the bags um, in the middle of the circle and go choose a different bag. Well, everybody holds onto their bags so tight. Right. Right. Because everybody's got problems. Everybody's got their stuff. So when you're sitting here and you're thinking about growing a business or growing a life or whatever it is, and you're like, but I'm not good enough. Guys, everybody is worried about not being good enough. And when you worry about, you know, what will people say? There will be people who most people will say nothing because they're so consumed with themselves. And when you sit around and you worry about, can I make this work? Who cares? If it works, you will have made an impact. If it doesn't work, probably no one will notice. So stop waiting. Exactly. Exactly. And the and the thing is, is that it's in it is it's tr- so much is that it's in the journey of 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 reaching out. If you stay safe and small, then you're not going to grow and you're not going to learn very much. There's been times for me like I'm I don't know, I don't know if this is a Scorpio thing. I have like five planets in Scorpio. <laughs> so I'm like Scorpio, in, you know, in the definition in the uh, in the dictionary. But. I have tried different things in life. I've tried different businesses. I've tried different 
ways of living. And the thing is, is that each one I have put forward and I go, mm, I get to a certain point and I go, mm, that's not, that's not good. That doesn't feel good or that, that, that's not to my benefit. But the fact is that, that the very reaching out for it has given me confidence that I can do things and that it has also pushed me forward. So the things that are seem really big, I'm like, no problem. I can do that because I've yeah. done these other things. Do you know? It's being able to Absolutely. step out of that box. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I think that the biggest mistake that the biggest mistake that humans make is, is waiting, is waiting for anything. You know, I am the queen of bad decisions, <laughs> bad. De I'm the queen of bad decisions, but I'm also really successful. And when I say I'm the queen of bad decisions, not because I make poor decisions, I make so many fast decisions that mm. some of them just have to be poor. Mm, mm. Mm -hmm. But you make a right? decision, but you're deciding. Yes. And I'm, so I'm constantly moving forward. And even if I'm not moving in the right direction, sometimes it's that, you know, it's that momentum and that's, it's that, um, it's that direction that I can go, Oh, let's just take a left turn. And if you are waiting and if you are sitting still, nothing ever happens. I mean, so many amazing things have happened out of some of the bad decisions. And I don't mean, you know, one of those graduation mini books that's like fail your way to success. I just mean I discover something, right? I'm like, oh, my gosh, I made this terrible decision and I didn't, you know, this didn't work. But I actually ended up hiring this person in that decision and they're an amazing employee, you know, or whatever it is. Right. So it's about being... I, I have a three-year-old and people ask me all the time, what are the two things that you, you know, what are the few things that you want him to know um, or teach him more than anything else? And, and I'm skipping the love and kindness and compassion, not because it's not important, but because for me, that's a given, yeah. right? That, that's the first thing. But the second one is to be a fast decision maker. And the third one is to learn how to win. We don't teach kids how to win anymore. And it makes me insane. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and 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 not not winning at all costs, but but being being a winner, meaning that you took a journey out and you stepped out, and you don't have to necessarily get into first place, but the fact that you actually showed up, that you went out of the you dance floor, you can't not get first place eventually. It's not possible, right? If you put a focus on winning. You, you may win yourself, win your way to first, you know, there might be some fifths and then some fourths and then some thirds. Um, but it, it, it there, the personal development industry has really messed up children mm -hmm. because the parents of children read personal development books and said things like, Oh, we have to take care of ourselves first and everyone can win. And, and, and it's actually really depleted um, the, in some ways, the work ethic in this country. And so certainly I know, you know, we shouldn't rob banks and you shouldn't put yourself in the hospital. That that's just silly, right. but there is an ability to teach winning. Um, and this came from my mother. I mean, this is so from my mom and I'm so grateful for it. There is this ability to teach the power of winning and the energy of winning and the mindset of winning that, that, that we've just lost. We've just lost. And so I end up having to teach it to adults because it's, it wasn't taught to them as kids. And so one of the first things I do with all my clients I'm working with to grow their business is first I have to go, I can't even deal with what's their marketing message because they don't have any concept of winning. Uh, and we have to start there. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, because then you have, you also have a goal in mind. And that's one thing that I wanted to, um, to touch on with you is that there are, I mean, this, it's wonderful that there are so many uh, people g going from either, you know, working for somebody else, working for another, for a company or a corporation and going into their own business, which I think is fantastic. There's a huge explosion, as you know, as you witness with women, because yes. it, I would say just over the last uh, few years, it, it is absolutely, you know, insane how many women are um, coming out and writing their own books and starting their own business, starting their, yeah. own, their own coaching, consulting. And I think that's incredible. But 
when you um, when you start off, a lot of people, and I've it, it's happened to me too, and this is something that a lot of people go through. But I've went through this as well. Sometimes we're we're really good, Suzanne, at a lot of things. And so when somebody says, "So what do you do?" and if you know you're starting your your new business, this always comes up where people go, "Well." What do I not do? You know, I do a little of this, I do right. that. I'm an expert at this. I do this, 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 this. And then so the message obviously gets watered down. Can you talk about that uh, for for people who are considering starting their own business or they're, they are starting their own business right now? They're not young, fresh entrepreneur and about the importance of at least honing in that message or narrowing down that scope because we all are good at a lot of different things. Yeah. So here's the bottom line. Just because here's what I like to say, just because it happened to you doesn't mean you should build a business around it mm. or it should be a part of your marketing message. So I get people all the time that are like, Suzanne, I really need to start a business. I want to start a business. I'm like, why? And they're like, well, I got divorced. And when I got divorced, I'm like, well, get in line because you got divorced doesn't mean you start a business around it. No. Or no. if you do, let's say you want to be a life coach, just saying that. It doesn't mean that you should be a life coach for divorced people, for empty nesters, and for people who are dealing with fibromyalgia, just because those are the three things going on in your life, right? right? right. The key to any business is you solve one problem. You solve one problem. And that problem has a couple of components to it. That problem must be specific. It is not, I help people feel better. No, it is, I help people um, get off of diabetes medication, right? Right. So it, it has to be specific and it has to have a level of urgency to it. There has to be a reason, right? Like that, that you want to put out, pull out a credit card and you'll do whatever it takes to, you know, to get a result now. So it has to have some urgency to it and it has to be strategic, right? The other thing I always like to say is I also like your message in your business to be set up in that if you solve that problem, you'll also need something after that because that's a business that can scale. So everything comes down to you solve one tangible problem. And I know you know this, but I can't even tell you, I can get into a circular conversation with an entrepreneur around this for hours because they really, when you're leading from wanting to make a difference over a strong business acumen, you get in trouble every time. Don't get me wrong. Nope. I know. I want to make a difference. Right. No, I know because I suffered that. Uh, I suffered that as well. You know, I, I, I it's like, well, I've got this, you know, uh, what, 17, 18 years in in radio broadcasting, um, almost three or four years with podcasting. Um, so I have a lot of knowledge around that. That's great. I could do that in my sleep. You know, I can teach radio skills yeah. in my sleep. Now, is there a large market for people who want to, you know, be, be on the air and or be a you know radio host or a podcast? host or you know yes there's a lot of new people that want to become podcast hosts not that i not that i think that everyone should be a podcast host okay yes because <laughs> come on now but but yeah. the thing is is that yeah i i have those um skills but that's not what i want my every single day to be about and that's not what i'm going to get booked on speaking gigs and that's not what i'm going to be known for I have a, a recognizable name maybe by people who have heard me on the radio or on podcasts, but really is that what I want to do for the, you know, for 10, you know, years or, you know, for the next segment of my life? No, not really. It does ultimately come down to the point of, yes, I want to help people, but I want to help people specifically find their dreams and access their dreams through their business, through starting a business and also clearing out all that crap that we hold. I want to help people overcome all that stuff. So yes. it, even though it's a wide, it is, it's a, it's a wide um, genre of, of things. It's scaling it down. And like you said, solving one specific problem, overcoming your obstacles in order to accelerate your dreams, overcoming the stuff that's holding you back in order to excel in life, in love, in business, whatever. That's more of a, of a targeted message than, yeah, I just want to help people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it can't be feel better. And no. Have, you know, I was working with somebody the other day that was like, to have more joy. And I'm like, who is joy? <laughs> Why do we want more of her? 
right? <laughs> um, but no, you're exactly right. The, and the message is everything. I tell people that all the time. I'm like, if you can't stand in front of a group of people and in under a minute, be really clear about what you do, the results you get people, and why somebody should have an urgency to work with you. You don't have a business. You have an idea. Mm. Say that again, please, for the people. Preach it. Say it yeah. one more time. <laughs> Come on, Sister Suzanne. So, yes. So if you don't have a very specific message that you can deliver in under a minute that, that identifies the problem you solve, the results people will get and creates urgency that they want to buy right then. You don't have a business. You have a feeling or an idea. I love that. Yeah. You yeah. Ba- you basically and, and summed it. it kind of you summed up. You just summed up like every, you know, the whole roundabout thing with the Tony Robbins and these multi-day things. You basically just summed it up in like in well, oh, under a minute. 30 seconds. There you go, guys. And you didn't even have to travel. And right? you didn't have you to pay her. <laughs> but it is, but it's true. And so, so we get really caught up in, in, but here's the other thing I love when people say, but I'm different. What? Oh, please don't be, <laughs> please don't be because it will never work. Now I want you to be you. I want you to be unique. I want you to be your authentic self. I want you to bring your special juice to all of this. But when people go, you don't understand because I'm different. I'm like, no, we don't understand because no one understands. Right. Right. It's not because you're different. Um, uh, Special snowflakes don't build successful businesses. People who go, and and this is the other thing too, is you don't want to be building something no one else has ever done. People will come to me all the time. They go, I'm doing something no one has ever done. I'm like, do not do that. (laughs) Right. Because we're living in a day to, I mean, you know, unless you're a nuclear engineer, it's not, doesn't tend to be my client base. Um, (laughs) Right. There's nothing new to be invented. Right. We need to lose weight. We need to find love. We need to make money. We need to manage money. We need to be better parents. We need, right. Whatever it is. Right. It, it's all been out there. So don't try to do something new or create something crazy and random. Try to improve the marketplace. Right. Try to bring a unique angle to it. With your Try, own unique brand, with yes. your own unique personality. Trillion percent. Yeah. Trillion percent. When you said, um, you know, because I, I love that whole thing with uh, under one minute to um, to let people know what it is you do. And then that sense of urgency just just for shits and giggles. Um, can you would you would you do that? So let's say I'm let's say I'm, you know, for our listeners, too, so that they can get it as well. So let's say I, I meet you um at some event or something, or I'm sitting next to you at a restaurant and I'm like, oh, this person sitting next to me sounds quite interesting. Let me just go up and ask her what she does. So, um, so I'm walking over with my Pinot Gris. Um, excuse me. Uh, uh, I just overheard you speaking. You sound like an amazing, uh, human being. What is it that you do? I own a company that helps small business owners and entrepreneurs under 10 employees who have a service-based product, make more money, launch, scale and have sustainable businesses for the rest of their life. Booyah. <laughs> right. And, and I have, you know, obviously my business is a little bit complex because we have different divisions. As you said earlier, we have a speaker division. Yes. We have a digital marketing division. We, but at the end of the day, I'm a education training and uh, consulting company for small business owners. So I, I normally say that, but it could be, you know, when your business gets larger, it could be tweaked a little bit depending on the audience or the person who's in front of you. Well, the the different things that you offer, and I want to throw out the the uh, the web address as well for people who are interested. I know that right now everybody's glued to their listening device. So, um, if you want to uh, find out more about Susan Suzanne Evans, you can go to Driven Inc. dot com, and that's Driven I N C. dot com. Um, and check out all of the different the, the different uh, courses, but also also the the events the these these um, um, events that you have throughout the country sound so exciting to me, and I have not gone to one yet, but I I want to. Um, and, and I'm going to do something crazy, crazy. What? Crazy. What are you doing? I'm, I'm going to give everybody my personal email. I oh, never girl. No, but it's send me a question. Um, tell me what's going on with you. Tell me what you got out of this conversation. Um, tell me if you want to talk to one of my coaches and you'd love, 
you know, a strategy session around growing a business or launching a business, or maybe you're in business and you'd love a cash injection session. You want to make more money. Um, and it's really, you know, we hide my email so that people can't get to it. It's very, very elusive. It's, it's like the bat Suzanne. phone. Yeah. It's, it's Suzanne at Driven Inc. <laughs> 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 uh, but it really is. It's it's, I mean, it's so funny. We get people to write in all the time and go, I'm sure Suzanne has a hidden email. So I didn't know where to send this. But it's <laughs> Suzanne, S-U-Z-A-N-N-E, at driveninc.com, driveninc.com. So so write to Suzanne. You can write to her. And, and when you do, please tell her that you heard uh, you, yes, you, yes. You heard her on Out of the Box with Christine. You heard her on the podcast because that also lets her know how many people are listening and reaching out. And I know my my audience is very proactive, um, and 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 that you're going to love love um, what you see at the website. But I know that you've already because you're still listening to this podcast. You know, some podcast. I'll tell you, and you know this, Suzanne. The attention span of people is coming down to a gnat. Right. It, it is. So, and, uh, but, but no one has left this because no, we are fascinating. We are divinely fascinating. <laughs> but most most people in the in the podcast world, you know, they, they 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 it's usually the first three minutes, the first three to five minutes, and then they're there, and then they you know either drop off. But I'm so happy to say that I've looked at my statistics, I've looked at the length, and most of the people who listen to this podcast actually listen to the entire show, which I want to give yeah. a round of applause for your That's attention awesome. span. Yay. Um, but also what's important with this program, because it's going to help so many people really you know, at least get them started, at least get them jump started, like your jumper cables on your car, get them started into um, going after that that dream or um, trying to realize that business plan that they have in their brain and motivate them also to reach out to Suzanne at uh, Driven Inc. But I want you to share this podcast uh, as much as you can. The YouTube video of it is an excellent way to do it because you can share it so easily in emails and also social media. So please do that um, um, uh, at the end of this program. You want to share that as well. So Suzanne, I wanted to uh, ask you. So what do you what do you have coming up for you? Because I we started off the show saying how busy you are. Do you have um, any kind of events that are coming up for people that they can attend? Any uh, multiple yeah, day events? Yeah, well, we're, we always run. It's usually about one every six weeks. Something called. Uh, Business Acceleration Mastermind. We call it BAMs. And these are small um, masterminds uh, with usually no more than 12 businesses in them where you get one-on-one -on -one strategy from me. I'll create a business with you and for you or the business that you currently have. We'll give you a strategy. We'll solve problems. You'll walk out of there with a personalized plan from me. And that's something you can email me about. Um, at the Suzanne at driven .com, and I could have a team member talk to you about it. But our bigger events, kind of our, our big events, we just wrapped one in Orlando, Florida a few weeks ago, but our next one will be in Atlanta, Georgia in November. And I, I can't give you the exact dates. So it'll be around the 11th. The only reason is we're signing the hotel contract now. And I don't mm -hmm. want to say something that may change by a day or so, but that is in Atlanta, Georgia. And that's speaker Inc. And that is a three day, um, really intensive boot camp. If you're interested in becoming a speaker or using speaking to grow a business, I co-host that with my dear friend, Larry Wingett, who is one of the top what? keynote speakers. Yeah. He, in the country. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. The pit, is that the pitbull? Is that the pitbull? Yeah, the pitbull of personal development. <laughs> um, so he and I were, were best of friends and I, I hoodwinked him about six years ago into doing this event with me and being a co-host and we this will be like our seventh sixth or seventh year this year and it's it's soup to nuts it is intense because you actually it's not just to sit and take notes there it's a experiential workshop um and usually about 250 we usually register about 300 means 250 275 people there and i'm happy to gift a ticket to anybody on this podcast. So again, if you write into Suzanne at driven inc.com, I'll get you with one of my team members and we'll give you a ticket. They're usually about two ninety seven if you pay for a ticket. Wow. I would love to have you. So those those you know, we always have something going on. We've got a lot going on, but but that probably if somebody's on here and they're like, I'm, I'm, 
I'm grooving with Suzanne. I'm digging this. And I would really want to take my business to the next level. Or I really want to launch my business. A BAM would be really great. And they're really, really affordable. Um, a team member would talk to you about that. And then if you want to, if you want a Suzanne experience and a pit bull of personal development experience, which can be a lot. So you gotta, you gotta come in ready to play ball. At that event. Yeah. Don't be a wall. So, don't be like yeah. somebody who's going to just sit there and go, I don't, I don't really think I feel comfortable speaking. Listen, we're going to tell you in just a second why it's important to, um, to, to, to go to this event and also why it's so, so absolutely important for your business and your bottom line and your bank account to be a public speaker, to be a motivational speaker, a business speaker, whatever it is you, you're, you're jiving with. So just remember that in block out every, uh, every day in, in November. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for Atlanta, Georgia, for Suzanne Evans, the uh, Speaker Inc. And again, she's offering uh, folks who email her. This is the, the ticket is close to three hundred dollars. She's giving you a freebie, a free one, free access to this event. You just got to fly yourself there, but you have to email her at Suzanne at Driven Inc. dot com. And as I had mentioned there and, and teased. The importance of speaking, the the importance. Can you please drive that home uh, to our listeners? Well, I built my business. I mean, I, I truly grew my business to a million dollar business only speaking. Um, now, of course, we do a lot of different things, but I was I was doing a touch of online, which really just came in the form of a couple of webinars and some newsletters. But 80 percent of all of my revenue in building a million dollar business came from speaking. And when people come to us to start their business, it is what we focus on wholeheartedly because if you want to get expert status, if you want to get exposure, if you want to go from a nobody to a somebody overnight, put yourself on a stage. It's the cheapest, fastest way to do it. So it is not a nice, it's a necessary, it's a non-negotiable if you're going to be a business owner. I wholeheartedly agree with you, and and also what what I'm 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 thinking that you're probably also teaching. It's not only just the the nuts and bolts of 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 how to build your speaking career because there's 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 a lot of elements to it. It's not just taking the stage and being charming. There is a whole thing about you know how to how to get booked, how to get um, speaking gigs, but then also how to develop your the the arc of your. Sp- of your speaking and um, and what you're going to be saying. And then there's also, you're not going to just do this amazing speech and then just jostle off stage without being able to increase your income in another way. And that is what we usually call the pitch or the final, uh, it's usually the, the, the final few minutes of, of somebody's um, speaking at a, a lot of these events. Yes. Can you talk about that too, the importance of that, of the pitch? Well, you never speak without making an offer. And sometimes that offer is a paid offer. It's something you ask people to invest with you in a dollar amount. But sometimes it's what we call a free offer. And we train between the differences of all of these. And that means you go and you give a great talk. And maybe you were, you know, you you weren't paid to be there. It was a free opportunity. But at the end of it, you offer people an opportunity to have a conversation with you, to to go a step further, to get some true value from you one-on-one, which is then you're the ability, then you have the ability to transfer that into a sales conversation to get one-on-one clients or customers. So every event that you do, every speech that you give needs to have some form of an offer. Um, it I just like depends that. on what it is and how you do it. And that's one of the things we, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this out there for fun. At the event we teach, these are all the models for speaking. There is free to free, there's free to fee, there's fee to free, there's fee to fee, and there's just fee. So we teach these fee, five, five, five. We teach all of these different <laughs> models so that no matter who you are or what you're doing or where you are, you've got an incredible amount of opportunity to go out and speak and generate revenue from that pretty quickly, even if you're not being paid to speak. Exactly. I well, I really like the idea because I've I've seen some incredible speakers who, and in the whole time, you know, you're sitting there kind of going, "Oh, I wonder what the pitch is going to be. I wonder what the offer is going to be. I wonder, wonder, wonder." And then what I've loved, which and it immediately gives to me, it gives me, uh, or it gives that person integrity in my in my world. They'll do this amazing um, um, speech, right? They'll just they get the crowd up and they're motivated. People are like, "Woohoo!" And then they'll do. A free off. They'll still just say, you know, text 
uh, this text my you know my name at this number and I'll give you my latest book. It'll be you know not a hardcover, sure. but it'll be it'll be the the download version of my latest bestseller of my New York Times bestseller. You sure. will get that. I love that because that is uh, first of all it's very smart because now they're also getting a list of of people that are interested right. in who they are, but um but also it's offering something to somebody who if they want to take that extra step. They're going sure. to they're going to read what you're saying, and then when they contact you, they are serious. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. They're serious because they've taken the time. Can you talk about also the importance of 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 writing uh, books? Because you've again you you've had a, a few New York Times bestsellers. The way you, uh, the way you do anything is the way you do everything, and the Hell Yeah Diaries. Um, I would assume that. Because you are an author um, and a best-selling author, that also helps you with um, speaking engagements, with getting booked and keep being keynote speakers for for events. It does, you know, unless you are, um, you know, John Grisham. People don't make money off of books these days, mm -mm, mm -mm, right? Mm -mm. What it gives you is incredible credibility. Right? right, right. So it gives you credibility so that you can book a speaking gig. It gives you credibility so that you have a foot in the door. You know, when you say I am the author of, there's just a cachet to that that um, you can't deny. And it, it, it also immediately, you know, you could write the worst book in the world. But if you say I'm the author of, people make an assumption that you have, you're an expert around that and that you have an incredible amount of knowledge enough to write a book. Oh, definitely. Well, especially, right? especially if it's a yeah. bestseller. <laughs> yeah, especially if it's a bestseller. And, and, you know, most of my clients who write books don't have bestsellers, and it works just as effectively, right? Yeah. So if, if it's a bestseller, certainly that's icing on the cake. I mean, I, I love that I'm a New York Times bestseller for the obvious reasons, but really it's a little bit like Academy Award winner. It doesn't matter what happens in my life. I'm always going to be a New York, New York Times bestseller. Exactly. And so there's certainly an added level of leverage to that, but having a book just makes you the real deal. It makes you more serious. It makes you more believable. It makes you more trustworthy. And it, it's, I like to, I, I worked with a woman years ago who ran a write a book in a weekend program. And I love what she always said. She said, it's your big business card. Yes. Right? Oh, it, it's your, it's your big yeah. business yeah. card. I agree wholeheartedly. And um, I'll tell you from a, um, a radio uh, host and, you know, producer and from and doing the podcast, it also helps get you booked on interviews. And, you know, oh, for sure. if you are able to get on, if it's uh, your local community radio station or if it's a, a podcast and I encourage people to it's really great to get booked on podcasts, even if it's something that's not a huge, you know, uh, you're not Joe, on Joe Rogan or anything like that. But if you're on a podcast, it also helps develop your communication skills and also how you can uh, hone in your message because you're not going to have a whole lot of time. Um, not a lot of people will be giving you a full hour like I'm doing with uh, with my guests on Out of the Box with Christine, but it really helps you. It, it's practice, you know, so that you can get your message. Oh, you just across. learn. You learn how to talk on your topic. You learn yeah. how to take your conversation deeper. You learn how to bob and weave. To be honest, right, and just that that developing that that facile muscle that makes the, the the easier your conversation is around your topic, and the more fluid it is, and the more facts and data and information you can give. Again the more you're trusted. So it helps you do that. So I, I you know, I, I still to this day speak everywhere. You give me five women in a ladies room and I'll give a talk. You tell me there's a podcast with two, you know, two old women in a recliner in a nursing home listening. I'll be on it. <laughs> I, you know, any, anywhere I can practice my message and somebody can hear my message. I've, I've always done that because I know that every success that I have had and that I will have is me, uh, my message becoming richer and someone hearing that message and passing it on to somebody else or taking action on it themselves. And here's the thing, and I've learned this from so many years doing the, the work that I've done, you never know who's listening to you. 
Never. You never know. Yeah. I've had. I mean, I'm on this because you heard me speak. Yeah. I mean, I was there. I was there to to speak at an event and to sell a product. And I, I saw I spoke and I sold my product and a bonus, you know, a cherry on the Sunday is you said, hey, would you be on my podcast? So that's the other thing, too, is I've never done a speaking gig that something didn't come of it. Exactly. And, and when, yeah. with, when with when you're doing these kind of when you're doing the podcasts or the or radio again, you never know who's listening. I've I have found out that um, I mean, like, you know, lots of celebrities have have listened to the show. Um, I, <laughs> I've found that there's a, a, a very amazing, extremely, extremely famous, uh, comedian who, um, listens to the, the, the work that I do. And like I said, you never, ever know. So when you come at it from, you know what? I don't know who's listening, but it could be someone who is going to be my next step, who is going to be my next connection, my the, the, the person that needs to hear me. It's going to take me, help take me to the next level. That's how you can approach it. And also, it's really great to listen to yourself talk because yes. when you hear, I've had people have, I, Suzanne, they've got a, a book, they got a great title. They got a great photo on the book. Uh, the book, you know, the description sounds awesome. And then when I've had them on the air to do an interview, it's so painful because they don't yeah. know how to talk. They don't know how to talk. They don't, yeah. they'll, they'll answer a question. I'll, 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 I'll ask a beautiful question and they'll answer it in just a couple words. And yep. this is your opportunity to get your message out, to, to, to get uh, as much as you can out to the world. Because, again, you never know who's listening. Yep. A thousand percent. Every time, say yes to everything. Take every opportunity. Speak everywhere you can. Word. I hear you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if um, so, again, if people wanted to find out more, and you'll have, um, I really encourage people to go to the website. So it's driveninc.com. And um, is there a way for them? Obviously, there should be um, a way for them to sign up for to be notified of the events as like a newsletter or something like that. that you yes, have? yes. If you if you go to driveninc.com, you will you'll see there that you can opt in, and that'll let you know about our events that are upcoming and. Um, um, on the top right hand corner of the site, it says, let's talk. And actually, if you um, if you look there, you can fill out a little form and also could get a session with one of our coaches. But that'll get you on our list as well. And um, and then, of course, if you email me uh, in our conversation, I'll make sure that I get you on the priority notification list as well. And remember, also, she uh, she did this a very generous offer. Um, uh, a free ticket. It's almost a $300 value to the Speaker Inc. event that she is doing um, along with the pit bull of personal motivation. Is it personal development or personal motivation? Personal development. Personal development. I just remember pit bull. That's a very smart brand little gimmick. Oh, he, he's one of the best branders I've ever ever met in my life. I love it. It's it's very um, easy. I, can, I can't remember his name, but I can remember the pit bull part. Yes, Larry Wing it. Larry, Larry Wing it. Oh boy, it just sounds. <laughs> it sounds. Yep. So <laughs> um, that's going to be in November in Atlanta, Georgia, Correct. and Suzanne is um, offering a, a free ticket to uh, to the Speaker Inc. event. But you have to email her at Suzanne at driveninc dot com. Make sure that you reference uh, that you heard her uh, on this program out of the box with Christine, and she'll uh, she'll get you all that information. Um, dear, we are running almost out of time. I wanted to ask you if you had any final words, if you wanted to let people know anything else um, before before we go. Uh, you're, it's your time. You got about uh, two minutes. Stop waiting. I don't even need two minutes. Stop waiting, <laughs> right? Whatever you're, wherever you are, whatever you're doing as you listen to this, whatever you're thinking, whatever you've been planning, whatever you've been scheming, whatever you've been dreaming, um, stop waiting. Take some kind of action on it today and be willing to risk it all. Be willing to fail miserably. And in that failing, you will almost certainly succeed. Oh, because yeah. there's there's always something out of it. So I, you know, if I had one message for the world, it's hurry up. We don't have a lot of time left. Mm. Suzanne Evans, I want to thank you so much for spending the time with me today and for entertaining our listeners with some real wisdom and knowledge. Thank you so, so much. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. And when you're back in uh, so SoCal, we, please let me know. I would love, love, Absolutely. love to see you again. Okay? Absolutely. And if I come down to the South anytime soon... I'm going to, I'll, I'll ring you up or I'll email you. <laughs> <laughs> I would love it. All right. Thank you so very much. My guest today has been Suzanne Evans, president of Driven Inc. Again, you can find out more by going to driveninc.com. I want to thank you wonderful listeners also for tuning in. Please make sure that you share the show. If you've enjoyed it and you think it can help someone, so easy to do. You can subscribe to the program, of course, on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, all of the podcast delivery systems, Podbean. But you can also subscribe to the YouTube video and you can send that in social media. You can send it in emails and that's the best way to get this information out to the world. Until next time, I want to remind you as always to think outside of that damn box. Bye for now.